I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the stages of development. Now I did do another video about like the important weeks in fetal development, but this video is going to be talking about the different stages. So there's three stages, pre-embryonic, embryonic, and fetal. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start with pre-embryonic. So pre-embryonic stage lasts the first two weeks. What happens on day one is conception. The sperm and the ovum unite, usually in the fallopian tube, and they form something called a zygote. So this is composed of 23 chromosomes from mom and 23 chromosomes from dad. And if you remember from biology, 23 chromosomes is a haploid number, and when they combine, that's 46, which is a diploid number. And if you don't remember all of that, I did a little chart here so we have our cell. Our cell has a nucleus. Inside the nucleus contains chromosomes. What contains chromosomes? DNA. DNAs are segments of chromosomes. And then finally, genes uh, control heredity, so our traits, if you're going to be tall, short, red hair, that kind of stuff, and those are segments of DNA. So if you don't remember this from biology, I just wanted to put this on here as a little refresher. So moving on, this is all happening in day one, conception. Day three is a large mass of cells. So what happens is from day one to day three, there is all of this change, this rapid cell um, division and growing and getting not necessarily bigger, but more in quantity. So by day three, there is a mass of 16 cells and this is called the morula. So this is on its way to the uterus. In day one, we're hanging out in the fallopian tube. By day three, we're on our way to the uterus because we can't stay in the fallopian tube if we want to grow because the fallopian tube isn't made to grow, but the uterus is. So we need to migrate our way down to the uterus. After we've done that, over the next four days, lots and lots of division continues. So large cells form a mass that leave a fluid-filled space surrounding the inner cell. This is called a blastocyst. And then the outer area of this is called a trophoblast. And so you're going to hear me talk about trophoblasts a lot in this video. Trophoblasts are a big deal. Trophoblasts are what will form our placenta. So this is the first two weeks. This is the pre-embryonic stage. Now let's jump into the embryonic stage. Now we've talked about the pre-embryonic stage when we were a zygote. Now we're going weeks two to eight. Now we're an embryo. And a lot is happening in this time. This is actually a very critical time in fetal development. This is when all of the organs and tissues are formed to some extent. This is also the time when they're at the highest risk for being exposed to teratogens. So things that are causing harm or death to the baby, to the um, embryo. So let's talk about what happens during weeks two and three, because everything is happening. So during weeks two and three, three cell layers are formed. These are called the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. These are going to be the future tissues and organs for the baby. So why do we need to know that? Because we need to know what each um, layer does and will become. So the ectoderm, will become the outer layer of skin, the glands, the hair follicles, the nails, the external sense organs, and the mucous membranes of the mouth and anus. The mesoderm will become the skin, the bones, the skeleton, the cartilage, the muscles, the blood and blood vessels, and the kidneys. And kind of a, a fun fact about this, so your kidneys are being developed at the same time your cartilage, like your ears, are being developed. So that's actually why your kidneys and your ears are kind of similar in shape. And a lot of times people who are born with kidney issues or hearing issues have issues with one or the other. So that's just kind of a fun fact. It happens sometimes. Why? Because they are being developed at the same time, the mesoderm level. And then the endoderm is the linings of the trachea, the pharynx, the bronchi, the digestive tract, and the GU tract. These three cell layers are actually attached by what will become the umbilical cord. So we have, everything is developing, we have an umbilical cord, kinda sorta, 
What about like our bag of waters? That's where this comes in. So the amniotic cavity. So there's two parts. There's the chorion and the amnion. So these are formed at implantation. Now, I don't want you to get these words mixed up. Conception is when the sperm and ovum unite. This happens in the fallopian tube. This is fertilization. Implantation is after we've taken, our zygote has taken its little three-day journey to the uterus and it's being implanted in the uterus. So implantation happens in the uterus. Fertilization should happen in the fallopian tubes. And gender is determined at fertilization because the sperm carry an X or a Y. So your sperm already knows if it's going to be a little boy or a little girl, even at conception. So carrying on with the amniotic cavity. So the chorion surrounds the amnion, so the chorion kind of protects the amnion, and then the amnion protects the developing embryo. And what's great about these, as the embryo grows, the amnion can also grow. It's made to do that. So the two of them fuse together to become the bag of waters, or the amniotic cavity. Someone says, oh my water broke! That's what they're talking about, their bag of waters. So a lot's already going on in the embryonic stage, but remember when the pre-embryonic stage, when I talked about those trophoblasts and how important they're gonna be? Well, they're doing some stuff here too. They're doing some stuff in the embryonic stage. So what happens is these trophoblasts, they make something called chorionic villi. And if you remember from biology, villi are like the finger-like projections, right? So those villi, their job is to penetrate the decidua. The decidua is what we call the endometrium or the lining of the uterus when you're pregnant. So their job is to penetrate that decidua. And then once they do that, mom's vessels, so the blood vessels of the uterus, will dilate around those villi and the two can form a good strong placenta. Now I'll do another video on preeclampsia, but what happens in preeclampsia is this messes up. So we don't have good you know, penetration or mom's blood vessels don't dilate enough. But we'll talk about that. But this is the embryonic stage, okay? So this is weeks two to eight. There's a ton going on in this stage. It's probably the most important stage in development of the baby. Now we're on to the final stage. This is the fetal stage, and this also happens to be the longest stage. This is weeks nine to birth. So during this stage, it's actually kind of cool, the baby already has every organ system and every external structure that will be found on a full-term baby. Now, they are still a little bit primitive. They are not ready to be born at nine weeks, right? But they have everything. They have the start of everything at this point. So organs continue to develop and the fetus gets ready for extra uterine life. So life outside the uterus. So it has a lot of growing and a lot of developing and getting better and bigger and stronger and developing its reflexes. It has a lot to do in this fetal stage, which is our longest stage. All right, so now let's do a quick recap of everything. The first stage is the pre-embryonic stage when baby is referred to as a zygote. This is the first two weeks. Day one is conception where the sperm and ovum unite. This is the process of fertilization, and then this is when gender is determined. Stage two is the embryonic stage, when baby is referred to as an embryo. This is weeks two to eight, and this is a very, very busy time. Lots of stuff is getting done. Organs are being formed. We're having you know, the primitive versions of our placenta and our umbilical cord, and all the things baby is going to need. And then finally, stage three, this is the fetal stage. This is weeks nine to birth. And in this stage, baby is continuing to grow and develop and get bigger. So that's a little review of the pre-embryonic, embryonic, and fetal stages of development. If you want to check out my other video that talks about the important weeks in fetal development, I'll put it in the description box. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you in the next one.